Every year, in late summer, one of America's great road racing circuits, Laguna Seca, here in sunny California, becomes a living retrospective of motor racing's infinite history. The historic races at Laguna Seca are actually one half of this fantasy-filled weekend, as they are teamed up with the fabulous Concorde d'Elegance, held down the road at Pebble Beach the following day. If you were unable to make the historic races at Laguna Seca back in 1989, you missed an opportunity to see not only some of the greatest cars ever to compete in international competition, but also some of the drivers, as a special tribute was paid to Aston Martin, the British manufacturer that won the 24 Hours of Le Mans back in 1959, and also a tribute to some of the men who drove Aston Martins during the 50s. The highlight of the event was the recreated pit area which replicated the starting grid for the 1959 race at Le Mans complete with spectators and gendarmes. These Aston Martin DBR1s, DB3Ss, and even the more production-based DB4s and earlier vintage Lagandas have been restored to the exact specifications that they boasted during their heydays, racing under the proud banner of Aston Martin. The fact that the Aston Martin company was able to race competitively through years of financial struggle and frequent ownership changes is a resounding endorsement of how resilient the cars and their drivers were. Men like Jack Fairman, Tony Brooks, and Peter Walker turned in many a great performance in cars like these. But the fans attending this event in 1989 were treated to the attendance of several truly legendary drivers who raced and won in the Aston Martin. Innes Ireland, who now writes for Road and Track magazine, drove for Aston Martin back in the 50s. He was a champion in both sports cars and Formula One, and he feels the success of Aston Martin has as much to do with the people as the car itself. It was a, almost a family atmosphere, I think, and which included all the mechanics, and when one drove at Le Mans, we all stayed in the same hotel with the mechanics and everybody, and dinner was always with everybody present, and it was just a wonderful, warm feeling that you got from, and they were very serious about what they were doing, and uh, so I think that's probably the large part of it. Without question, one of racing's all-time superstars is Sterling Moss who drove for not only Aston Martin, but also for great racing teams from Mercedes-Benz and Jaguar. The Aston Martin was a terrific race car, but Sterling admits it wasn't perfect. I'm telling you more things that were wrong with the Aston, but having said that, it was one of the best balanced and nicest handling cars that, uh, that I ever drove. And it's because of, because of the car's superb balance and characteristics that, that the car did so well. I mean, not, its win at Le Mans is, is, to me is even more remarkable than any other success because it was not really a Le Mans car. The Aston Martin DB3S never won at Le Mans, but did finish second in that 24-hour race twice. Aston Martin's sole win at Le Mans came in 1959, a DBR1, driven by the man who all of these people were lined up to see, Carroll Shelby. He will always be remembered for his creation of the Cobra and Shelby Mustang, but he and co-driver Roy Salvadori won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1959 in an Aston Martin, a car he still fondly remembers. Yeah, I have a lot of fond memories about it. You know, uh, the thing that uh, that I remember about it is such a wonderful handling car, and uh, although it might not have been quite as fast as the Ferraris, we usually got them just on handling alone. One of Shelby's biggest fans happened to be mingling in the area while we were there. Comic and Tonight Show guest host Jay Leno. Jay is a real classic car enthusiast, and his valuable car collection includes a number of Shelby automobiles, so you know he was enjoying himself. Uh, well, it's just fun. I mean, I'm a big car guy, so this is, uh, um, this is great fun. I'm having a lot of it, It's terrific. You know, this is what I do. I, it's like the ultimate garage. Another noteworthy visitor to the Aston Martin tribute was the first American to win the World Drivers' Championship in Formula One back in 1961, Phil Hill who was duly impressed by what he saw at Laguna Seca. Recreating the uh, 1959 Le Mans pit right here at uh, Laguna Seca. That's about as extraordinary a thing as anyone could do. Seeing Carroll Shelby climb into the Aston Martin DBR1 that he drove to victory at Le Mans, with Roy Salvadori already seated in the car, could mean only one thing. It was time to hit the track. It was a stirring moment to see this lineup of British thoroughbreds parade out of the pits onto the Laguna Seca track surface, driven by some of the luminaries of motor racing that the true fans of this sport will never forget. 
the sound of the dual overhead cam six cylinder engines emitting the same baritone growl that filled the air 40 years ago had lost none of its powerful melody. The 1950s were a romantic and adventurous chapter in the history of sports car racing. And thanks to these cars and these men, we can in some small way relive those days when the Aston Martin challenged the world.